Hello, welcome to the course PH5 BO6 Electrodynamics 2. The contents of today's lecture is taken from a textbook of electrical technology by BL Teraja and AK Teraja. We'll continue to discuss topics from chapter 2 Network Theorems. Last class we have discussed about Thevenet's theorem wherein a given network is reduced into an equivalent circuit which consists of a single voltage source with a series resistance. Today we are going to learn another network reduction method known as Norton's theorem. So according to Norton's theorem, any linear active network with output terminals A and B can be replaced by a single current source ISC in parallel with a single resistance RN or in the case of AC network and impedance Zn. ISC is the current that flows through the short circuit output terminals and Rn is the resistance measured by looking at the terminals when all the voltage sources are replaced by corresponding internal resistances or impedances and current sources with open circuit. Open circuit means infinite resistance. So in Thevenin's theorem, a network is reduced into a voltage source with a series resistance. Here, a given network is converted into a, a current source with a parallel resistance. Okay. Let's now try to understand what is the step-by-step -step procedure for uh, finding out the equivalent Norton circuit. This is also known as Nortonizing a given network. So imagine uh, this is your uh, given network. You have a DC power supply with voltage E, two external resistances R1 and R2. AB is the output terminal. For now, there is no load resistance between A and B. So first step, remove the load resistance RL, if any, between the output terminals A and B and short circuit them. So if you have a load resistance, remove it and connect these two points. That's what we mean by short circuit in the output terminal. Okay. So if you don't have any load resistance, directly connect these two points and short circuit. Okay. Calculate the short circuit current ISC. Okay. So how do you calculate the short circuit current here? Short circuit current is the current flowing between A and B. Okay. So you have the the source of current here, so current start from the positive terminal, it travels through R1 and it reaches this junction. And it has two options either to flow through R2 or flow through AB. As I said earlier, current always prefers the path of least resistance. Whichever path offers less resistance, current prefers that path. So here there is a, a resistance R2 here, but in this path, there is no resistance. So what happens? The entire current will flow through AB, bypassing that resistance R2. Therefore, the total resistance experienced by the current flow is R1. So how do you calculate the current? Total voltage divided by total resistance, which is E by R1. This is your short circuit current ISC. Next, calculate the effective resistance of the network by looking at the output terminals from where RL is removed after replacing all the voltage sources with their corresponding internal resistances and current sources with open circuit. From the very definition, you can make out that this Norton resistance Rn is nothing but the Thevenin resistance Rth we have calculated in the previous class. So here you, you need to replace uh, the voltage source E with its internal uh, resistance. For simplicity, you can assume that the internal resistance is zero. So basically you short circuit these two terminals now you can make out R1 is parallel to R2. So R1 is R1 parallel R2, which is R1 into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. 
The current source ISC in parallel with the Norton resistance Rn forms the equivalent Norton circuit. So we have current source which is E by R1 in parallel with the Norton resistance R1 parallel R2. So if at all there was a, a load resistance RL present and then the current flowing through the load resistance or the load current would be found out by inserting RL back to its original position as we have done in the case of a Thevenin circuit. So let's do a couple of problems so that we get more familiarized with uh, this Norton theorem. So Norton is the given circuit shown in this figure. So you have a DC power supply with 100 volt, internal resistance is zero. Then you have three external resistances, R1 10 ohm, R2 10 ohm, R3 15 ohm. There is no load resistance between the output terminals. Okay. So first step, you need to short circuit the output terminals. So connect these two and you have to calculate the short circuit current or the current flowing from A to B. Okay. So as always, start from the positive terminal of the battery, current flows through the 10 ohm, reaches the point C, then it has two options, either flows through the 15 ohm uh, or flow through the 10 ohm. Right. Now whatever current flows through the 15 ohm, that current is the one which is going to flow from A to B. So ISE is nothing but the current flow which flows through the 15 ohm resistance. Oh. So how do we calculate that current? First calculate the total resistance offered to the current flow. Okay, so you can make out here this R3 and R2 share two common points. So R2 is parallel to R3 and this parallel combination is series is in series with R1. So net resistance is R1 plus R2 parallel R3. You plug in the values, the total resistance is 16 ohm. Total voltage is 100 volt, total resistance is 16 ohm, so the total current drawn from the battery is 100 volt divided by 16 ohm, which is 6.25 ampere. We know that in the case of series connection, uh, current remains the same, so 6.25 ampere is going to flow through R1, same 6.25 ampere is going to flow through R2 parallel R3. So when this current flows through R2 parallel R3, the potential drop across R2 parallel R3 is nothing but current 6.25 ampere multiplied by resistance which is 10 ohm parallel 15 ohm. So this is 6.25 into what is the value of the parallel resistance 10 into 15 divided by 10 plus 15 this is around 37.5 volt. We know that in the case of parallel connection, voltage remains the same. So 37.5 volt is going to drop across R2. The same voltage is going to drop across R3. Now we know what is the value of R3. We also know what is the potential drop across R3. So we can easily calculate the current flowing through R3, which is nothing but the short circuit current. This is voltage 37.5 volt divided by resistance 15 ohm. This is 2.5 ampere. Now you need to calculate what is the Norton resistance. So basically you look from this output terminal, you have to replace uh, the voltage source with its internal resistance. Internal resistance is zero here, so you just short circuit this. So when you short circuit, you can make out that this 10 ohm R1 and this R2 both are uh, in parallel. And this parallel combination is in series with R3, right? So the Norton resistance is R1 parallel R2 plus R3, which is around 20 ohm. So what is the equivalent Norton circuit? You have 2.5 ampere current source in parallel with the Norton resistance 20 ohm. So this is how you Nortonize a given network. 
Let's do one more problem. Up by Norton theorem to calculate the current flow through the 5 ohm resistor shown in the figure. So I have a DC power supply with 20 volt. No mention about its internal resistance. So you can assume that internal resistance is zero. Then I have 4 ohm here, 4 ohm here, 8 ohm here, 10 ohm here and a 5 ohm here. So 5 ohm is the resistance which is between the output terminals. So I can consider this as the load resistance. I'm asked to calculate what is the current flow in through the load resistance. So I need to calculate what is the load current. Okay. So I'm not going to uh, solve this problem exactly. I will just tell you how you can solve this. Right? I will explain the methodology. It's, it's important you understand the methodology rather than the information so that you can apply it to any other problem. Okay. So what is the first step? Remove the load resistance 5 ohm, connect these two terminals together. Circuit is short circuited. You need to calculate the short circuit current. So always start from the source. Source is the positive terminal of the battery. So current is going to go from here. It flows through the 4 ohm, reaches the point C. It has two options. Uh, part of it will flow through the 4 ohm, remaining part will flow through 8 ohm. As always, current prefers the path of least resistance. So more current will flow through 4 ohm and less current will flow through the 8 ohm. Now it reaches this junction. Once again, it has two options, either to flow through the 10 ohm here or flow through AB. Once again, path of least resistance. This path has no resistance, right? On the other hand, this path has 10 ohm resistance. So what happens from this point, the entire current is going to flow through AB bypassing the 10 ohm resistance. So in your calculation, you can disregard this 10 ohm. Now, you need to identify which all resistors are in parallel and which all are in series. So if you disregard this 10 ohm, you can notice that this 8 ohm and this 4 ohm are in parallel. And this parallel combination is in series with this 4 ohm. So the net resistance is 4 plus 4 parallel. Eight. So you can calculate what is the net resistance. And total voltage, 20 volt divided by net resistance will you will give you the total current drawn from the battery. Once again, in the case of series connection, current is constant. So you can calculate what is the current flowing through the 4 ohm and what is the current flowing through 4 parallel 8. Once you know the current flowing through 4 parallel 8 combination, you can calculate the corresponding uh, voltage. And for parallel connection, voltage remains a constant. So you can eventually find out what is the current flowing through the 8 ohm resistance, just like the previous case. right? So whatever is the current flowing through 8 ohm, that's going to be the short circuit current. Okay, so you can do this, uh, you can work out this problem and calculate what is the short circuit current. Once you calculate short circuit current, next step is to calculate the Norton resistance. For that, you need to replace the power supply with its internal resistance. Since internal resistance is zero, you just need to short circuit the battery. Okay. So this is the circuit when I look from the output terminals A and B. Now you need to identify which all resistors are in parallel, which all in series. Easily you can make out that this 4 ohm and this 4 ohm, these two are in parallel, right? So what is the combined resistance 4 into 4 divided by 4 plus 4? This is 16 by 8, which is 2. So I can write this parallel combination as 2 ohm here. So I have 2 ohm and the 8 ohm here and the 10 ohm here. You can divide this into two equal halves. Now you can make out that in the upper half 2 and 8. This is in series so net resistance is 10 ohm and this series combination is in parallel with this 10 ohm resistance. So the total resistance of this loop is 10 parallel 10. So you can calculate what is the value of 10. So that is 10 into 10 divided by 10 plus 10, which is around 5 ohm. Okay. 
So if you do the math, you will find out that the short circuit current is 1 ampere and the Norton resistance is 5 ohm. So your equivalent Norton circuit is the current source 1 ampere in parallel with the Norton resistance which is 5 ohm. Now your aim is to calculate the load current. For that you need to insert the load resistance back into its original position. So you have 1 ampere with the two parallel resistors 5 ohm, 5 ohm each. Now, without doing any math, you can uh, find out what is the current through the load resistance. Uh, you have two equal resistance here, so the current will be split equally. So 0 0.5 ampere is going to flow through this resistance and 0 0.5 ampere is going to flow through the load resistance. If the resistors were not equal, then what you do? You calculate what is the value, total value of the resistance here. You have two parallel resistors, calculate the total value. So you have current flowing through the parallel combinations. You can calculate the corresponding voltage. Once again, for parallel combination, voltage remains the same. So you know what is the voltage drop across this resistor. Voltage divided by resistance will give you the corresponding current. Okay. So you can do this problem as an assignment. So that's for today. In tomorrow's class, we will learn about power transfer theorem. Thank you.